Wish you were one of those influencers with raving fans who binge on your every word, consume all your content, buy everything you have to sell, and demand even more? Then stay tuned while Authority Magazine columnist and BuzzFeed contributor Tracy Hazard shares strategies, tips, and tactics from top videocasters, podcasters, authors, and social influencers on creating that bingeable factor. Now, let's join Tracy as she explores how to rise above all the digital noise with The Binge Factor. Hey, everyone. Welcome to The Binge Factor. I'm Tracy Hazard, and I have Seth Goldstein today, Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. But it's not just that cool name for a podcast, which... You know, it, it brings to mind code and all of these other things. And we're going to geek out today. I'm going to guarantee you that. So if you love that when I do it, today is your episode you don't want to miss. We're definitely going to geek out. But here's the thing. Seth has done over 500 episodes across many shows. So he really does know what's really working. And because he has such a great digital marketing background, he knows whether or not it converts and it adds value to you. So he's going to give us lots of tips, all the things he's tried over the years. So let's learn some more about Seth. Seth is a former newspaper journalist turned digital marketer and podcast. He's worked for news outlets across Pennsylvania and New Jersey. After getting massively burned out, he turned to digital marketing, starting his own business at the best time. I think that's sarcastic. In 2008, the idea was to start a business to get a job, but it's been more than 15 years and Seth's still at it and loving every minute of it. There's been ups and downs, but that's the entrepreneurial journey, but he wouldn't change a thing for it. And it's why he hosts a popular podcast called Entrepreneurs Enigma, where he talks about his experiences and talks to other entrepreneurs about their journeys as well. This is why I was really excited when he came across, you know, there's a lot of people who have like, I'm going to say it, website, SEO, digital marketing experience, and they'll never make a good guest. Like I pass on them a lot, but I saw his energy and I listened to his show and I saw the way he talks about things. And I knew that his entrepreneurship viewpoint on everything and his experience in his company, Goldstein Media, were going to make a difference here in us really learning something about what we could apply and use with our shows that is going to have great effect to us being seen, heard, and found. So I'm so glad I invited Seth Goldstein on today. Let's talk entrepreneurs enigma. Seth, so glad to have someone who's so experienced here with me today. Like, you know, 500 plus episodes, that is quite the resume in podcasting. And you've had many, many shows. So we're going to talk about, you know, how some of that happens. But what attracted you to podcasting in the very beginning? I think it was because I also, first of all, Tracy, thank you for having me on. It's, It's a pleasure. And I think it was really based on my journalism background. I, I enjoyed creating content, building content out, sharing my knowledge with people, helping people along the way. And I feel like, and then I was also my editor in chief when at my previous job had said, you should go on the radio. I'm like, all right, I don't think I have that good of a voice. He's like, you should go on the radio. It, it's probably what you should do. And then podcasting kind of really hit its stride in 2010. It's really, I mean, it's been, it was around like 20, 2004, 2005, Leo Laporte and all of them were kind of dabbling in it. Evo Terror was playing with it. I'm not that early. I'm not that much of an OG. I'm not sure how far back you go, but like uh, 2010-ish, I started dabbling with it. Hangouts on air. Remember those? Those were fun. Yeah, so, yeah. definitely remember those. No, I'm a 2014 where I really dove in, but yeah. um, but we That's were got, we were guesting stride. and doing other stuff prior. But yeah, I got, I got my stride around 2015. That's usually when I get, like when Twin Goals to me really was going strong with its with its comp with my company, and then I was like, all right, I can do this because I was an entrepreneur and I could do all that stuff. So, <laughs> well, what did you find? You know, was working back then just isn't working today. I'm not getting found as easily. <laughs> It's I'm harder, going, right? Because there's so many people out there podcasting, you know, which is great. And I'm not complaining. I, mean, I think it's great that everyone has a podcast. Everyone and their mother have a, have a podcast. But it's getting through the cruft. It's getting through everyone has a podcast. Not everyone's doing good at pod. It's not it's a good podcast. And that's the <laughs> yeah, thing. That's it's right. Like, everyone has one. They're not necessarily good. <laughs> and also pod feed is a huge thing. There's a big portion of podcasting where there is not more there's no more than 30 episodes i think podfade's you know kind of sets in around 30 
I think actually it's less than that. I think really, they, yeah, it depends on the network you're on. Like we find that yeah. people who are on like Libsyn and Anchor are down towards 11 episodes or less is their average. And those that are spend more money on their podcasting, you know, they, they spend the a gear, little bit more yeah. on their host and their gear. They tend yeah. to be closer to 23 on average, but it's not. That's like, it. Yep. Oh, wow. And they spend all that money on it. Jeez. I, I remember when I started, I had a Logitech headphone. I mean, I, I wasn't spending my, I didn't get a good po podcasting mic. I mean, now I have a shirt and I'm, you know, I'm like, and thank God for it because I have a kid in the house. You know, lawnmowers are going on outside. You can't hear anything with this microphone, thank goodness. But, you know, but, you know, I mean, I, when I started, it was literally, I think it was a computer microphone. I, I knew better than to use the, the webcam mic. But, but beyond I had, I, that, you probably didn't that, have I think much. I had the two plugs. I think I had like the two stereo plugs, the one <laughs> inside the computer. Really we, did, we had a mixer in the beginning because there were oh. we were co-hosts in the same space. So it had to be a little more complex. Oh, you're brave. Yeah. But I was like, that was up to my partner. I did everything else to set up the show, but his job was the equipment. And so like, oh, yeah. it worked. Mixers and was dangerous. like yeah, and I was like, and, and sometimes you forget to turn it on and I would get so pissed because I can't repeat myself. I just don't do it. I can't. No, it's, it's, it's always better the second time. I always feel like when, when things go wrong, it's always better the second time. Oh, it's, I don't think it, so. I'm not good really, with the second time. Like it always feels like it's tighter. Oh, no, like, not me. Know. I don't know. Something about repeating myself. I can't do it. <laughs> oh, I'm very good. At repeat to ask my wife, I'm very good at repeating myself. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> You're perfect for edited podcasts. I love it. Exactly. Well, you know, this is the thing is that over time, you've changed your show. You have social media ads addicts you've had digital marketing dive you've had all a bunch of different shows over the time mm -hmm. and now you're on entrepreneurs enigma mm -hmm. what's working for you here that you learn from those past shows that you're bringing forward it's kind of just being patient and, and a lot of people are like, oh, more, another person saying being patient oh my god if one more person tells me to be patient i'm gonna jump no it's you have to be patient i have 159 episodes at the time of, of this recording and it's picking up now it's gone through the craft it's gone through the jungle and all that stuff and people are starting to notice that people are wanting to be on the show and it's just persistence it's like if are you enjoying it great it also is this is also used as a business tool for goldstein media because i get to meet people i have a reason to go out and say hi steve or john or don or whoever i have a podcast i see you're an entrepreneur i'd love to chat with you like no strings attached no sales call and even after the podcast they say how can i help you is there anything i can help you with and if they say no great we stay in touch i check out and the best part is the podcast doesn't come out that week it comes out like a month or two later so i have another touch point now all this is not you would think oh this is this is brilliant seth i'm gonna pat myself on the back here and this is all planned out no this just sort of happened to happen that way it's just sort of like oh i have enough podcasts that they go out every two twice a week but i have do two or three a week of recording. So I have a plethora of podcasts to go out. Therefore, I have touch points later on saying, hey, it's still coming out. I, and I haven't forgotten about you. So I have more reasons to talk to these people. So it works out nicely. And, you know, I think that's what so many podcasters don't do is they don't take the whole serious setup of the opportunity for mm -hmm. follow-up, right? And yeah. you and I both know that when you're an entrepreneur, follow-up can be everything. No, it is everything. Like literally, I, I've gotten business from the podcast because they're like, I love what you do. Can you help us? Can you help us with the podcast? Can you help us? What else do you do? Oh, I really like your entrepreneurs and name website. Can you help us build one for our podcast? Or can you help us build this one for our business? Or sometimes I contact them, them right at the right time when they're saying, we got to do a rebrand. I'm like, hi. Perfect. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I, can, I can help you with that. Let's chat. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I love that that has been the core of what you found as your benefit. What are some other benefits that you found that you have were surprised at, maybe return on investments from your show? My name is out there. Like a lot of people are talking about personal brand. And now you got to do go on LinkedIn, which you got to do. You got to have these profiles out there. But I'm already generating content and I can trans get transcribed and all that stuff. I have content to put out there and I don't have to generate more content. So I'm kind of, it's kind of multi-purpose and I'm not really struggling with, oh my God, what am I going to put out today? What am I going to say? I, right? have five, I have five podcasts that just came out in the last few weeks. I've got quotes from them that I can throw into Canva real fast and put out there. And yeah. Well, you and I 
we're talking a little bit about SEO and just, you yeah. know, this idea of getting Google ranking and doing all of this. And I always say to everyone, like anyone can get their name to rank on Google, but it doesn't mean yeah. anyone's going to search for you if your name's mm -hmm. not out there, right? No. So like any good SEO person can get your name up there. Unless you're John no Smith. Looking, that's kind of what's the point? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, ex exactly. If no one's looking for Steve Jacobson or whatever, you know, and they, they don't know to look for you. Great. You're the top. Yay. Yeah, but Vanity it's not Metro. doing anything, yeah. right? It's not no. driving that visibility that you really crave and require. And yes. that's the hard part. I think it's the hard part in podcasting and on websites. It's it's find very ability. similar. Find the ability, but key find the ability. You don't just want someone who comes to your show, listens to one episode, it's like, all right, great, that was fine. I enjoyed it. Bye. You want someone that comes to your show likes your show, listens to five or six more shows behind it, you know, and, and then subscribes to listen to more. And even better is are the ones that write you a review. Yes. They, or, or, they, or they send you an email saying, I love the show. Not I love that term good. that you just threw out there, key findability. Yeah. That's really important because so much of, I mean, and I'm going to say it because you and I are both in the digital marketing world. So we know that there's yeah. a lot of hacks out there and they'll mm -hmm. hack anything and try to be an expert in something that they're not. Yeah. But a key findability is I'm found for the key of what I provide in this world. Yes. And you can consume a lot of me. You can binge on my content exactly. and you're going to get what you are looking for. Nice callback. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate. Yeah, I've been doing call. this a while, just like yeah, you, right? <laughs> I, yeah, I appreciate a good callback. Very good. Yeah. Bravo. I love it. Well, you know, I there's some things that you're doing like absolutely amazingly stellar at, and I'm wondering if you or your producer does this, but the titles. This is like good That's SEO all me. 101. That's all have, you. I, I have I figured have it had to be. I, have, I am the producer. <laughs> I don't know how I do it, but like I have like. That's another reason why there's so many that like, like I am scheduled through November 7th as I look at my cheat sheet here. So I have episodes out there, but I'm also a former journalist. So they put us through the ringer with, he with headline courses. Surprisingly, when I was a journalist, I sucked at headlines. Me too. When I wrote for my ink column, I sucked at it. <laughs> but apparently I'm good. Well, according to you, I'm good at them now. No, because you know what? It's it we we <laughs> learn something from over there. And there are so many podcasters that are really bad at titling. They aren't applying good journalistic integrity to yeah, it. Yeah, my my thing, my role with the title, tell you know, get the word entrepreneurship in there because you're talking about entrepreneurship, but also what makes this guy, this person, this gal, this person different. You know, and put that in the headline as well. And then every once in a while, AI helps out and jazzes it up a little bit. I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. lie. Every once in a while, chat GPT, if I get stuck, I'm like, here's a transcript. Give me a headline. Well, some, you know, we used to have to do this when I was writing for Inc. Magazine. We used to have to generate 10 titles, which used to just like annoy the heck out of me because I told you I don't like to repeat myself. I don't yeah. like to do things that are repetitive. By number oh. three, I've got it. Like, why do I have to generate you seven of them more? It just used to bug the heck out of me. I yeah, wish, you knew I, wish I had go. AI at that yeah. point because I would have been like, here's three, give me seven more. Like, and just like, see if and any of them were better or not. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the one thing I've learned about AI is that it can get a little flowery with the language. Like I have a bio... <laughs> I have two bios, which you, you see in my, in my thing I sent over to you. I have two bios. One's the one that I wrote, which is journalistic and kind of to the point. And then I put in the chat GPT for fun. And it says, I'm an ink stained journalist, news hound. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a little <laughs> over the top. It's a little over the top. You see, they're one, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I call it, it gets a little hyperbolic. Like that's the term I used. And I was Hyper, like- I love that because it does get yeah, hyperbolic. It's, like, it's, it's on speed, right? Like that's what it is. It's something's like not quite, it's like it this person likes in. energy. So I'm going to give it to them to the nth degree. Like it's Oh, crazy. if you hit, do not hit energetic as- Yeah, do not ask for more positive and more energetic. It'll give you crazy stuff. <laughs> oh, it starts hallucinating really fast. <laughs> I love it. So you've tried a lot of things over the years. I could saw in some of your like comments and your descriptions, you've got like, buy me a coffee. You've got megaphone ads. You've got like yeah. uh, MPN. You've got like all kinds of things going on in yeah. there. There's a lot of gimmicks. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't work. Most of that doesn't work. Most of it doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> yeah. Buy me a coffee. It's there if they want to, if they want to throw me a buck, buy me a coffee, literally. Fine, it's there. I'm not going to argue with them doing that. 
there's um the megaphone ads for them on MPN. That literally I throw it back into the podcast. It's not a whole lot of money, but I throw it back into the podcast and I'm able to go to Malpod or something like that and boost it. Hopefully get a few more listeners that way later on. Tell everybody a little bit about how that works. So I don't know exactly how it works. I know that you put your RSS feed in, you pick the episode, you say, I'll give you a hundred dollars for 133, you know, IAB downloads. And as much as that annoys me, it works, but it gets me, it gets me 133 downloads. It usually gets me like 400 or 500 listeners. Because you got to realize that Apple Podcasts doesn't download the episodes anymore. Unless you ask for it to download, it's streaming. Spotify streams unless you ask to download. Pocket Addicts is the only one that makes you download first that I've noticed. And so I don't listen to the IAB. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Malapod, for the 133 um, listeners you know, that downloaded it. But, oh, my God, for 100 bucks, I got five hundred or so listeners and if three or four each time decide that they want to stick around great it's a, it's a long game yeah you, do it, it you, do it, you don't do it for the instant celebrity you do it because you enjoy it i enjoy it because i get to talk to people because what a surprise i'm an ambivert so well and i'm not a fan of that to be honest with you i'm just gonna be straight with you about it is that i found that if you're running a business from your podcast it will not work in the long run it <laughs> It, your guest strategy will work. Your other yes. things will work, but the download numbers won't do those numbers from those types of things. Those listeners yeah. don't become clients. It's not going to drive That's more true. of that, right? Yeah. It will yeah. drive up your ads, right? So if you're making money yeah, off hurt, of ads, yeah. it'll drive them up it, a little bit and it help, it doesn't hurt over there. Yeah. But it is, it is not giving you core listeners who are really going to yeah. rate, review, binge on you, send you to I've other got, people. Well, I have gotten you. one review from someone who got from Malpod. Oh, good for you. I got one. So I'm like, that's good enough. And I usually only use Malpod or any of those other ones for big ones. Like I had, um, I have Guy Kawasaki on my program. Yeah, I threw money behind that. Yeah. I had Marcus Sheridan on the show. I threw money behind that. Ran Fishkin. I'm dropping name dropping, but like Peter Shankman's <laughs> coming up. Oh, I've talked to all these people. Yay. But, you know, but like those are the ones I usually throw money behind because I want to get them the, the exposure. Because the name association can help you as well. So that's exactly. not a bad reason to do it. But, but yeah, yeah I, mean, I agree with you overall. It is kind of throwing money at the wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not core to the growth mm -hmm. of your business if your listeners are where you're monetizing. Mm -hmm. That's just not going to help you there. No. But the other side of it is that, you know, if it helps you make a better relationship when you follow up and say, hey, look, Aran, exactly. here's how Absolutely. well your episode did. That's a good conversation, right? Yeah. So there's, purpose, there's right? Have there's a purpose. <laughs> have a purpose. Absolutely. That is kind of key. Have a purpose. Don't just do a podcast and not have a purpose i've had heard them and they're terrible they're terrible they're right? everywhere they're, i mean they, i mean people are like oh these conversation shows they're like oh it's just a conversation no there's a plan behind that conversation you just don't know about it so uh, you and i found each other on podmatch yes how's that one working out for you surprisingly wow i've met some i've had some people say oh it's garbage and then they get garbage people on there and all that no I'm fine. I, yeah, you get some that are a little weird, some that are not ready, and some that are just like, uh, I'll interview you, but I'm not going to put money behind it, whatever, that kind of thing. And then I, I found these gems of people that I'm not friends with because I'm like, I just want to stay in touch with you because I think you're cool. Right. Like, I, so I mean, even that's... in the business, it's just fun. It's It really is like a dating site for friendship. Dating for site podcasting. For, for podcasters, right? <laughs> it's I'll awesome. Tell, I'll tell Alex that next time I talk to him. <laughs> Alex Sanfilippo, is a, he and I have discussed like what's going on that it really works for some and not for others. And and some people are getting ones where like, they, like, the guy comes on with his shirt off and he's drinking an energy drink. And I'm like, what is this? Chat? What is this? Like, what was I that? Chat roulette? Yeah, I think you're swiping badly. Like it's like swipe no, right, swipe I, left. I, like, I, I, what are you doing in your picking? You're not teaching the AI properly, is what I think I is happening I'm, there. I mean, I get some. I get some weird matches. I just pass on them. I get ones that are not real, like that don't apply to me. Like, well, in the, it, yeah. In the beginning, so I've done it a year now. Yeah. And um, I in the beginning. I would do it like every couple of days, I would max out their seven or eight or whatever it is that you yeah. get the matches for six to eight or whatever it is. And I'd max yeah. them out and I would go and I'd pass on a lot of them. 
Yeah. Because like, I'm really picky because I have a really tight profile of who I'm willing Ooh, to interview. I'm right. Honored. So yeah. You you definitely okay. met the you well over 500 episodes total. You made the cut without even blinking. There you so go. like yeah, two per week. You definitely made the cut, right? Like no, so that's really some nuts. easy for this me to for tell. Nuts, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I want to talk to the nuts, right? Like so that is why you're you perfect one. for me. You Seth. got one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I did a lot of that like passing. Mm -hmm. It learned really quickly because now mm -hmm. I can go in once a month, and out of the six to eight that I get that I look through. I can fill my calendar. Isn't that so wonderful? It's wonderful now. So I don't even spend as much time, but I don't care that I'm spending the money because I'm getting eight perfect people into my show every mm -hmm. month. My thing with pod match was I, I don't need pod match. That's the thing. I don't need, I don't need it. Right. Like that's a yeah, difference. I don't right? need it. Like I, my calendar was filled before pod match. I was going LinkedIn and say, Hey, I want to talk to that person. Cause my end goal is to get their conversation going with the person who I want to have potentially do business with. But pod match surprisingly has added i was like oh this is going to give me a few fillers in when i need them which i don't really ever need i met some gems in there i don't yeah, use like, linkedin anymore met... really i don't use it at all anymore i find it complete i i find a lot of junk there oh and there's a lot of, there's a lot yeah. of talk about cross. it's just there's like yeah i mean i if i can't find somebody that i personally am interested in interviewing and the only way i can get to them is through linkedin i find i don't get a response from them there like it's really hard to get people to respond back unless they are like you wow. can tell if they're a heavy linkedin user but i just find that people have stopped and i look i was a heavy linkedin user for about a decade maybe 15 yeah. years. So and weird. I now only yeah. go in once a week to clear my messages because there's so much junk in there that it just makes it like- I wish I could get turned off the DMs. I wish I could turn off the DMs and yes. just keep the feed because I feel like the feed is better. The feed's I, useful. I do agree I, with the you. Feed, but the DMs, I mean, how many more people can just say, hey, we'll do SEO for you. I'm like, I do SEO for a business. Like, stop <laughs> and just read first. I know. I'm, I'll promote your podcast, right? How many of those do we get a oh day? Oh my god! <laughs> I know and that's and crazy. And they have like three followers. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> How are you gonna promote my podcast if you have no following? Well, you're an expert in digital marketing, an expert in all things websites and SEO, and I'm really curious as to how are you finding that interaction and interplay between your podcast and what goes on on the web. I feel like. Because I have the podcast, my name is getting out there. People are saying, hey, what else does Seth do? Oh, because I don't say the entrepreneurs and Enigma um, provided by Goldstein Media. I don't put, I don't put Goldstein Media until the end. It's, it's an end bug at the very end. After the outro, it says, Goldstein Media hopes you enjoyed this episode. And then it goes, MPN, yada, 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 yada. For that thing. So literally, I, there's no Goldstein Media branding on this thing other than Seth is Goldstein Media. And Seth is Entrepreneur's Enigma. And people have to, and I like, kind of like to keep the brand separate. But because they're separate, they're together. It, it, it's very weird how people have figured out that I'm one and the same. I mean, yeah, I am wearing a Goldstein Media. For those who are watching the video, I am wearing a Goldstein Media polo shirt. So it's, and I usually wear those on my, on my podcast too. So there is some, I, there, there's subtle clues to who's who, so. I'm always surprised that even if you're really straightforward about it, how few people actually read anything or do anything. Like my guests, I can I can tell you it's like, like -a nine out of 10 of them have no idea that I'm the CEO of Podetize. Like nine out of 10 of them. See, never I figured look. that out. I figured yeah. that out. But, but it's I'm not like I hide I it. Dug, <laughs> but I also dug around. I mean, I actually read your terms of service because. That's just the way I am. Like I, I went Good to your footer you. and looked around your footer. I'm like, oh, buy a ties. Let's see how this works. I went to built with to see how your website's built, but that just makes them a dork. <laughs> oh, I always run the code on everybody too. Just SEM yeah, rush them, you know, like no, that kind I of do. Thing. I, 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 we're cut from the same cloth. It's kind of like this is uh, you we're such geeks on it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's so much fun. I, I love that. Well, you know, thinking about that is like I you were mentioning this. Google's changing so much every single day and it's getting mm -hmm. harder and harder to be found everywhere. There's so mm -hmm. much noise on social media and they're constantly changing the algorithm. Google's changing its algorithm. Mm -hmm. But what are you finding that has been consistent through all this, you know, uh, almost 25 years of doing like that model of business? Personal branding. Just being yourself online, like if you're trying to do it for a business, I find that doing it for a business is hard. 
excuse me, doing it harder than doing it as a personal brand. Doing it as Seth, I can put my personality behind it. Doing it as Gold Semilla, eh, I've tried it. It doesn't work. And I feel like as long as you have a strong personal brand, you're going to get through the crust. You're going to get through the, what is it, GSE, Google search experience with the AI that they're trying to do and the ads. And you're, now you're on the second page and all that. I also feel like a lot of people are also going to be, all right, that's cool for the quick answers. All right, the ads are here. People are going to start moving to the second page to see the less things still. That's just yeah. my hunch. I, you know, and I think it's, I think the one thing that I've discovered over the years is, and, you know, going Google slap to Google slap through all the websites that we've done, especially <laughs> our, our 3d print one, where we had that way back when, like we hit yeah. a lot of Google slaps back then. Cause it was in the early days when it was yeah. more common that they were doing that is that our voice when our voice is coming through our blogs, when our voice is coming through our websites, mm -hmm. our videos are on there from YouTube, like all of that is mattering to the algorithm mm -hmm. and we aren't getting hit because of it. Our traffic isn't I've never, increasing. I've never got it's hit. It's growing. Gold Steam Media actually just ranks, full disclosure, Gold Steam Media just ranks despite itself. And <laughs> I've actually asked John Mueller over at Google, I'm like, I have 404s out the wazoo. They're like, Seth, after a while, we just say they're 410s. Because four tens means that they're deleted. Four or fours. This means that you've had so many, many that they're old and they're dead. Clearly, he's not updating them anymore. You know, we're Google. We can figure it out. Yeah. And I'm like, and I always, and, and that's a little tip. And a lot of times, people are, like, oh my god, four or fours. Four or fours are terrible. They're four obsessing just, about it's just, it. <laughs> it's just, it's just not there anymore. Should you do a four ten? Say Google, this is gone. This is never coming back. Stop looking at this. Yes, but you know, I mean, my life has been around since 2005. Like. I'm not going back to 2009 to delete stuff, you know, or it's stuff too much up. work. <laughs> Why? It's happening. almost easier to start a new site than it is to like fix an old one. Right? You gotta get through the sandbox though. I there's know a, there's a three month, there's a three month sandbox. So what we've discovered, cause we've done it many times, mm. we we've done it rebranded or moved over. So when I moved the binge factor off of Podetize into its own site, oh, I day, took yeah. 40 blogs with me because I already had 40 episodes because I spun. So the binge factor spun off a of feed your brand. So yeah. I was doing a once a month interview and they were getting so they were doing such success and people wanted more Just of them. More, yeah. yeah. So I decided to make it a weekly show and I spun it off into the binge factor. And so that happened in 2020 sometime right around there early pandemic project before yeah. the pandemic no it was oh, before before. Pandemic. it was like i started the year because every year i start a brand new podcast so i can show my clients what it's like and it was my 2020 oh, yeah. start so i had spun it off in late 2019 and then we just officially did it like january 1 and, and so stuck. it was its own <laughs> thing we came out of the google sandbox in 60 days i'm not kidding you because we already had 40 blogs in there wow and so and it and we moved some of those blogs and foretend them on our apodetized yeah. site and move them over. So, yeah. you know, there were a lot that hadn't been because I launched a bunch at once too, but it was just, it, it came it, out it, so when quickly. I, when I say three months, I mean, I've, I've launched sites that have come out in like the same day. It just so happens that whatever the URL had a good domain age and it, it had a good domain site. age. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. The binge Who factor the didn't knows? exist before, so it wasn't good, but it, and, so you and don't I think put that's A2SM. why Don't put A2SM. Don't put A2SM. Oh, and everyone's going to do it. Don't put addicted to social media, A2SM.com in the Wayback Machine. It's like some perfume site from, from Arabia. It's hilarious. <laughs> I never looked it up and I was like, all right, well, we're going to change this. Oh my gosh. I, I way back machine. I don't think they call it that anymore, but that's what we all the know. Archive, that right? org, yeah. I way back machine my very first uh, website, which was called T tools, T T O O L S. Yeah. And I don't even think we had com in the beginning. I think we had something like net in the very, very beginning. Yeah. And it still exists. I mean, at least I like some pages of it. And this is like 1998. Oh, yeah. People want to find, <laughs> yeah. find my, the, my, the glory days of my really <laughs> bad websites. It's not that hard. Right. So this is the point that's us making though. You think you delete these things. You think you discontinue no. your show. You think you discontinue this stuff. It's not really gone. It's no. still out there. And so you better be putting some new stuff out, right? Yeah. And make sure the old stuff's good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, what's next for your show? Where are you going with things? I'm going to keep going with the way I, as of right now, I'm going to keep interviewing people with interesting stories and their entrepreneurial journey. 
but this is my pandemic project. It started out as me pontificating into the ether about my my entrepreneurial journey at episode 11, which is not episode one. I got rid of all the pontificating stuff. I think there's like one in there where it's me talking. I was on vacation. I thought to put one out there. But the first 10 episodes were just junk. Got rid of them. But that's how it started was with that and it turned into an interview episode. And I think it's just, I, I the format's great. Two a week, it used to be one a week, and then it's sort of people want to be on it. And I do two or three interviews a week, it adds up. So either I let them go stale and wait a year, or I get them out twice a week. I know. I'm a big fan of like not having a big extended production Ugh. time, right? Yeah, you no. need to get out. I, I still do. Yeah. I'm, I'm still out until November, and I have I have all, all of September and October recorded. I have to edit them now. Which is fun because now there's now they're new to me because I can I, if you edit right after you listen to it it's kind of like oh my god listen to this again if you listen to something two weeks later it's like oh this is actually interesting oh snafu get rid of that but like you, it's easier to it's a lot easier to edit when you put some space between the recording and the editing. We remember how I, I think you know I finally revealed my reason for owning Potatize now. Um, I don't like to repeat myself. Remember, I just said that like three times yeah. in this episode. I'm repeating myself. You repeat yourself. But Woo! because I don't even like to listen to it again, I didn't yeah. want to edit anything. And that's how I developed a team. And then other people came to me and said, would you do this for me? And that's how that's it brilliant. happened. <laughs> because you're I don't want to repeat. Your own, your own <laughs> idiosyncrasies made you a business. Isn't that great? That's right. Exactly. Love Who it. Well, the, we talked about there being a lot of pod faders out there. Mm -hmm. What's your advice for entrepreneurs out there who have shiny object syndrome, they mm. can't stay motivated. What is your advice for that? How do you stick it out? Well, I'm nuts, number one. But no, I think what, don't over, don't try to overachieve at the beginning. Do one a month. Do one every two months. Like that's that's pushing it, but like one every six weeks, maybe. But but be consistent with it. Like say I'm gonna do one a month and have one a month for a year. Great. But then as you get that, keeping consistent but not over-promising is really the key. You, well, don't you and I both want... know that consistency is like a Google reward. So if you're oh, having absolutely. trouble being found, it's because you're being inconsistent, likely. No, nothing's worse than putting out an episode and then three months later putting out another episode. People are going to unsubscribe it and say, I guess this is dead. I mean, Pocket Cast already says, this, that says that after two weeks, it says that your show's on hiatus or on break or ended, or one of those terms. So the apps are saying this and they might, you got, you'll lose subscribers. So stay consistent, set expectations. Say, I am going to put this out every once a week, once every two weeks, fortnightly. I think, I don't know what that is, but it's not, it's not an intelligent fortnightly. And then, you know, monthly, the idea is that if you're consistent and you're realistic with yourself, you won't fade. And if you fade after 30 episodes, great. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take them down. I leave them up there. I put them on archive. If you don't want to host it anymore, archive.org would love to have your content and they'll host it for you over there. Well, and I not just that, all my but podcasts are over there now. At least you close them, please. Like that's the other advice I would give you mm -hmm. to close out what you're saying. If you did 30, do a final episode because mm -hmm. that's why we call it pod fading because you just stopped recording and didn't tell anyone you where you went. The sunset. <laughs> you're just like, right? That's why we call it that. So just, you know, just tell people why the show's ended. Yeah, it's like, I'm 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 tired. I don't want to do any more of that kind of thing. Be honest, but that's archive, probably yeah. going to be your most listened to episode. <laughs> there you go. But also, but also archive.org is a great place to move your podcast to afterwards. They will give you a little player that you can keep all your stuff there and they won't charge you because you're giving them internet content that they want because they're a library. I have four or five podcasts over there that were like four or five. And sometimes sometimes pod fade is not pod fade. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Like I had a co-host, I, mean, I love him to death. He wanted it to be NPR. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not editing NPR. This is not, and I don't sound like NPR. That's way not, too much work. <laughs> exactly. It's not NPR. And so we parted ways. So I had, we had 10 episodes. It was fun. But that's now in archive.org. Well, so that's why we developed multi-feeds at Podatize. We developed them for just that reason so that because if you still have a current show and you have dead shows, we didn't want them to be dead for you and we didn't want you to have to pay for them. So we created a multi-feed so you automatically can have them all in one place so you can see if the stats are still growing. Because like I still get about 10,000 listens a month on my 3D print podcast and I haven't posted a new episode since June of 2020. 
I did too. Digital marketing died actually outperforms yeah. Entrepreneurs Enigma still. It's actually ranking right. in Sweden, whereas Entrepreneurs Enigma is not even in the top 100 anywhere. I don't yeah. know why it's being found by everybody. Right. But you don't know that if you don't like, if you just so obsolete it and just make it yeah. disappear, you don't find out about this. You and don't find disappear. out. And, and it, it doesn't disappear. And it doesn't really disappear. <laughs> no. It's just hurting you. Right. Yeah. So exactly. such a good, such a good advice for those pod fighters out there. Seth, thank you so much for well, sharing with us today. And is there any last words, anything you want to talk about, about digital marketing and share with us about what you think is like next? Be patient with AI. It's not going to be the end of the world. It's going to it's going to evolve. We're, we're going to figure out how to use it for our benefit. Will there be, will there be missteps? Oh my God, there already is every single day. Biggest tip I can say is, yeah, have them write, have AI write your first draft, but then edit it. Put Please your edit. spin on it. Don't just put it out there to the ether because it's not your writing. Make it your own. But there's nothing wrong with like nothing's worse than writer's block. Give them, give them a few sentences and then send it out to AI, have them write, you know, 300 words and go back and make it 500 words because you edit it and make it better. So there's nothing wrong with it, but I think that's where the future is with AI, but AI helping you along the way. So I'm keeping your original voice, your personal brand, all that great advice Seth has already given us today. Listen in. Make yeah. it right. And I will make sure in the blog post for this episode at The Binge Factor, you will be able to connect up with Seth, find Goldstein Media, find all that he's working on. And of course, the entrepreneur's enigma. There we go. It's been so much fun. That's so wrapped up in this episode. And I forgot to give Seth his binge factor. I didn't do what I normally do in my show. That, I think I've recorded over 200 episodes and I've never not done that. So this is the first time for everything. So here it is. Seth Goldstein's and the Entrepreneur's Enigma Binge Factor. This show is so bingeable because it dives deep into the weeds. It gets into all the nitty gritty uh, nooks and crannies of digital marketing with guests that are struggling, that are winning, that are all over the place. And Seth gets to the right to the heart of that and gets you usable, great information that you can apply in your businesses on your entrepreneurial journey as well. I told you we were going to geek out on you. <laughs> Sorry if we did that a little too much. We get into the weeds on things, right? I mean, I can't help it. Uh, it's just, there's so much about podcasting that is a part of this geeky digital marketing world. In fact, it's the part where nine times out of 10, if I have a journalist or someone with a broadcasting background on, they like to discount. They like to diss that whole part of the, mar of the model of podcasting like it's unimportant in the scope of things. But here's the thing, and that's what I, I really think at the heart of what everything Seth was saying is when you absolutely combine that beautiful brand personality you have with the digital marketing expertise, with these technical skills, you end up with a show that does you good, a show that builds your business, a show that builds your brand, a show that gets your name out there, gets you on the first page of Google, right? It does those technical things, but it doesn't just do it for your name. It does it for a purpose. And I love that term he used key findability. And that's the key to everything. We want to be found, right? As podcasters, Seth has a lot of that dialed in. He's always looking for the next thing too and trying some things. And we geeked out for another half hour after everything was recorded here. We geeked out again to talk about even more things that we were trying, things we we're doing on YouTube, things we're doing with ad agencies, things we're doing in the marketing side of things. And the thing is, Someone like Seth is going to bring you what's working. That's why you're going to want to listen to a show. It's one and why you're going to want to reach out and find his guests as well. And you're going to want to come back here to thebingefactor.com so you can find all those things, right? I'm driving you to my website. This is a key findability thing. I'm driving you a website so that it's easy for you. All you got to do is remember the binge factor, but I am giving you access to wonderful people like Seth Goldstein, Goldstein Media the entrepreneur's enigma through me. That's what the beauty of network podcasting and building a business through podcasting can do for you too. So I hope you are inspired by Seth today. I hope you're inspired by all our guests here on The Binge Factor. And if you have someone that you're listening to that should be a guest on my show, reach out and tell me. And if you 
want to be on my show. You just got to ask. You may or may not qualify, but nine times out of 10, you make a good case to me. I'll make an exception. So I'd love to hear from you. Reach out to me anywhere on social media and at thebingefactor.com. Thanks everyone for listening. I'll be back next time with another Bingeable Podcaster. You've been listening to the Binge Factor Podcast. For more information on podcasting and video casting success tips and tactics, please go to thebingefactor.com. And be sure to listen to our other show for podcasters called Feed Your Brand. If you'd like to be interviewed on this show, as well as featured in Tracy's column, please go to thebingefactor.com slash guest and apply.